So guys, so this Friday, the 10th of November, I published this post on my Think Primary Agent page where I was uh, talking about the launch of the Think Primary Agent GPT. Ask me anything I put in here because the system is actually trained for you to ask anything, of course, related in the AML and financial crime space. So I created this GPT specifically for people that are working in uh, financial crime compliance and money launch economic sanctions, uh, regulatory compliance more broadly. The tool is actually going to be more focused in the answer that is providing for people that are working in the sector. Even if you are not working yet, but you are still studying, it will give you some very good uh, responses for you to, to study or even to get on with your job if you're working. There are some examples that I wanted to show you on what the tool can do. But let's start from the beginning to show you how you can log into the tool. So you've got in here a link in uh, my post that will direct you into the GPT that I have created. It's in from Agent GPT. So I'm going to click on that and you will see you will be directed to the FinFrame Agent uh, GPT which is exactly this one. In order for you to get access to this, you do need to have the GPT Plus account. So I'm afraid if you are on the free version of ChatGPT, it will not allow you to see it. So it's something that unfortunately is not within my control, but you need to have the paid version of ChatGPT to access these. There are in here, as you've seen, you know, the uh, examples of the standard chat GPT, some questions that uh, can already give you an idea of what, what sort of information you can see through the FinCram agent GPT. So you can use those one just to get, you know, familiar with the tool, or you can also use it for um, other questions. So I've got in here some examples that I prepared for you. That is another uh, information like I found on FATF LinkedIn page, uh, which they published a couple of days ago. So in partnership with the Egmont Group and Interpol, FATF uh, created a recent uh, new report, which is the illicit financial flow from cyber enabled fraud. So I was interested, for example, to see if my tool was able to help you to make a recap of this document. You can, of course, go to the main document uh, through this post on LinkedIn. You can read through the entire documentation. You can download it here. And then, of course, you can upload it into ChatGPT if you want. Or the alternative now is that you can jump into FinCram Agent GPT and you can ask it to do all that for you with a quick recap. So I'm going here a question where I'm asking, can you create a recap of what the latest the cyber enabled fraud the CEF report from Egmont will say? And I'm just gonna put this one in here. And based on the tuning that I've created at the back of the model that is running behind the FinCram agent GPT, now it's gonna take some specific actions. This is important to know that it is different from the action that the standard chat GPT, even the paid version, will uh, provide you. Because behind my model, there has been a uh, fine tuning that I have created for people that are within the industry or that are uh, studying and so on. So, however, you're going to have an angle which is slightly different from what you would get. Uh, within the standard charge GPT. Otherwise, of course, it wouldn't make any sense for you to use uh, the same private agent instance. So the way that normally you will get results is like this. A uh, short recap. So ask the system to normally provide you with an initial kind of executive summary of whatever you are asking. And then you can further drill down on whatever you want. So as you do uh, with the standard ChatGPT, you will get, of course, a link for from the source where this was um, taken. And of course, in this case, if you uh, click on the link, you will be directed to the page on the Egmont Group where Syngram Page and GPT source the information from. So you can, of course, cross-check that th th this is also accurate if you want to. But in here, you can also now drill down in some of these areas. So let's make another example and open a new chat in here and we ask something else. Can you help me prepare for my Canon's exam? This is something that I often receive also. People are using my videos to 
prepare for different sort of exams, which video they can watch for better prepare and familiarize with um, those topics. So this is something they can also now use uh, the FinCrime Agent GPT to do. So I'm going to ask this type of question and see how it can help me um, to, to move forward with that. So here is how we can proceed. The GPT is telling us we can go through key topics where we review uh, the high level topics for the exams and do some interactive quiz, uh, scenarios based exercise, discussion of reason, AML trends, doing some study tips and strategies. Would you like to start with an overview of a specific topic? Dive into interactive quiz or discuss something else. So let's start with uh, an interactive quiz, maybe. Start with interactive quizzes. Please, I like to be kind to my GPT. <laughs> you never know, one day they may turn around. So it's nice to, to train them uh, to be nice, right? Desire is irrelevant. I am a machine. So let's see what kind of quizzes um, you can get. So here is the full list of f initial five quiz. Let's go through them together and see how many uh, I actually know myself. Right, This is the first time I tried it. So, which international body primarily set global standards for combating money laundering and terrorist financing? I think this one. International Monetary Fund, the Financial Action Task Force, the World Bank, United Nations. So on the question one, I would say that the answer is B. Let's see question two. What does the term know your customer primarily refer to in AML compliance? Understanding the customer's business and financial activities, knowing the personal details of the bank CEO, reporting suspicious activity law enforcement, conducting annual financial knowledge uh, of customers. So I think this one is answer A, the first one, understanding the customer business and financial activities. Uh, question number three, which of the following is typically not a component of an AML compliance program? Employee training programs, designation of a compliance officer, regular independent testing for compliance, mandatory minimum balance requirements for customers. This one is clearly D. Let's go. Question number four. What is the purpose of a suspicious activity report? Uh, to report a customer for not maintaining a minimum account balance, to inform authorities about transactions that appear to be suspicious, to keep an internal record of all high value transactions, to alert the media about potential criminal activities. I think this one is B. But uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put question D just uh, to make an error. Let's see how it acts when we put errors in here. And then for last one, layering in the context of money laundering involves depositing a large amount of cash in foreign accounts, moving funds rapidly uh, through various financial transactions to obscure their origin, direct transfer of funds to no terrorist organization, keeping all illicit money in a single account to avoid detection. So. Uh, you can see in here, deposited large amounts of cash in foreign accounts, moving the funds rapidly through various. So this case, well, you know, it's not so obvious sometimes. It depends on how much experience you have, right, in the field. So um, I would put B in here and then uh, let's see what we get as a feedback from our film program agent uh, GPT. The first question is say correct, and then what it's doing is giving you an explanation um, of why it is correct. The second one, of course, we know is also correct. And question number four, the one we got it wrong, say, what did we put in the question four? Ah, yes, we put question, we answer with question D, and then it's giving us which is the correct answer, B. Suspicious activity report is used to inform authorities about transactions that appear be suspicious is a threat. It's a critical tool in the fight against money laundering and terrorist financing, allowing financial institutions to report activities that they reasonably suspect might be linked to illegal conduct. This question is correct, and it's a you did well, especially in understanding key concept principle as well as recognize. Keep in mind the purpose of SARS. So it's just telling you uh, the one you got wrong, 
and and so on so would you like to try more questions and from here you can continue and do more of that and uh, keep learning so let's make another example in here which i've prepared if you work uh, for uh, financial institutions we can ask this type of questions can you explain the process of conducting customer due diligence in a financial institutions for ml compliance and what are some key red flags to look out for potential money laundering activities so you can see in here the answer is telling us that um the identification of the customer understand the nature of the customer activities assess money laundering risks continuous monitoring so it's talking about the ongoing due diligence process and then it's focusing also on the enhanced due diligence process like for high risk customer edv is required uh, and that involves taking additional steps to identify and verify the customer's information and closely monitoring this, that transaction so uh, the language that is used by the FinCrem agent GPT is already kind of focused for people that understand um, this level of terminology. So enhanced due diligence, it doesn't actually explain you what um, is the, the full EDD process as it would if you were not someone working in this field because it kind of gives for granted you know at least the basics, right? So you don't want to waste too much time reading about uh, what is an enhanced due diligence uh, from, from the very beginning, but more the tune the, the model is tuned for helping you in focus more on what could be a, an answer that is relevant to you that you work in this field or you have minimum knowledge in this field and so on. Um, if you of course don't have that knowledge and you are uh, you, you do need extra explanation, you can always ask the system. And what else do we have in here? Regarding the red flags for potential money laundering activity are some of the key indicators. So we ask also for red flags, and that's what you probably want to be looking out for. Unusual transaction patterns, use of complex uh, corporate structure, frequently changes in account information, uh, transaction involving high-risk countries, inconsistency in information, and re reluctance to provide information. So those are some of the red flags you probably want to make sure you have checked in case you spot some uh, potential failure in the in the customer due diligence uh, aspect so uh, see also remember these are not uh definitely proof of money laundering but should trigger further investigation so of course with those we want to uh, highlight the fact that uh, each situation should be evaluated in the context of of the customer overall risk profile and compliance with uh, legal guidelines uh, just a few examples in this video i'm not gonna uh, make this much longer but just wanted to put this in context to let you know that if you are uh, someone at the early stages of your career a student or someone that is already a professional this tool will help you to move faster with the work that you do get some uh, interesting information out uh, from Fingram Agent GPT and uh, probably help you to be more effective and efficient with your job. So, hope this was an uh, interesting uh, quick overview. If you want more of those, uh, let me know and then we can put together some more short demos of my Fingram Agent GPT. If you have any feedback about this tool, you can let me know through LinkedIn or you can write your comments below this video so that I can continue the fine tuning exercise. Thanks for watching and uh, until next time, see you soon.